Lime 3DS is one of the best forks of the discontinued Citra, the best Nintendo 3DS emulator. Still easy to use and having all the features from Citra, it is the best way if you want to play Nintendo 3DS games on PC. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the emulator step by step with all the features this emulator can do. This is the emulator's official website and I'll put the link on the description of the video and if you scroll down here a bit, you're gonna see the minimal specs required to run Lime 3DS. Still on the same page, you're gonna go to the top and you're gonna click here on releases that will take us to the GitHub page here and right now this is the latest build of Lime 3DS, version 21.12. So you're going to download whatever is the latest build of this emulator. And right here on assets, we have to download links. And if you are on Windows like I am, to get the emulator, you're going to click here on Windows MSVC. There is also a different build of it, this MCS2, but they're basically the same thing. It's just that they use different recompilers, but they are essentially the same thing. So go ahead and download this one. The emulator will come in a zipped file, so you're gonna have to extract it, and you can use either WinRAR or 7-Zip, and I would personally recommend using 7-Zip, I'll put the link of it on the description of the video, and right here on the file, you're gonna click on it with the right button, and then select 7-Zip or WinRAR, depending on what you have, and you're gonna click on Extract here. You can delete the original zip file now, we're not gonna need this anymore, so now double click on Line 3DS, and to start the emulator, you have to click on this one here, the gi.ex. It will start as soon as you double click it, it does not need an installation guide. And right here on the middle, you're gonna double click to add a new folder to the game list. And it should open the emulator folder by default, and you can use this folder to add your games as well. But in my case, I like to create a new folder here called games, just so that I can keep things organized here. So this is the folder that I'm gonna be using for my games. Now, you're gonna click on emulation and then select configure, because we're gonna tweak the settings of the emulator. On the general tab, you don't have to change anything. These are settings that don't affect performance of the emulator. The same goes for system as well. You should only change this if you know what you're doing, but you don't have to. Now on the graphics tab here, under the enhancements, the first thing we're gonna change here is the internal resolution of the emulator. It can go all the way to 10 times the native resolution, and you notice that these are not the standard resolutions that we are used to. That's because, like a 3DS, this emulator has to work on two screens. So ideally, you should pick a resolution that is close to the monitor that you have. In my case, I have a 1080p monitor, so 5x native is the one that I should go with here. But you can go even higher too if you have extra power on your PC. The emulator will render at that resolution, but it will be fit to your monitor. Linear filter should be left on by default, and there are no post-processing shader options here. And texture filter, there's a few options here if you wanna mess with. The XBRZ is a good one, actually. Also by Cubic, but in my case, I'm going to leave it on none because I think it looks good enough. Don't change anything on 3D mode unless you know what you're doing. And right here on layout, there's a bunch of options that we can select here. Default is like if it was on an actual 3DS. There is also a single screen option, large screen, side by side, and also a option to render each screen on one window. They all work just as fine, so it's gonna be up to you. In my case, I like playing on the default resolution here. There's also an option to swap the screens if you wanna do that. You don't have to change anything here. And under utility, if you are planning on using textures mods into your games, that is HD texture mods or replacement, these are the options that you have to change here. Now let's head over to the advanced tab. These are the most important settings of this tutorial. Here on graphics API, by default it's set to OpenGL, but if you have it on your computer, definitely change it here to Vulkan. This will drastically reduce the stutters that can happen when you are playing a game. But if your GPU is old, you're only gonna have software in OpenGL available. If that's the case, the second best API is OpenGL. The software mode provides a very accurate emulation, but it uses a lot of your CPU. 
and you should only use it if you don't have neither the OpenGL or Vulkan. By selecting Vulkan, you're gonna have a few extra options here. Physical device is obviously the graphics cards that you want the emulator to use. So select your main one if you have a multiple GPU setup and also enable the shader generation here. This will make more use of your GPU for better performance. On the renderer section, the only two options I would advise turning off is shader compilation and accurate multiplication. Some games require the accurate multiplication to be turned on in order for the shaders to be rendered more properly, but it can give you worse performance if your GPU isn't that good. So at least on the first time you're playing the game, start it with this option turn it off, but if you think everything is okay, you can come back here and turn this on. Shader compilation can cause some stutters even when you use Vulkan, so I would recommend turning this one off. A sync presentation should definitely be turned on if you're using Vulkan because it will make the most use out of it. But it will work with OpenGL as well. On the Advanced tab, the disk shader should definitely be turned on and VSync can be turned off to give you more performance but it will introduce screen tearing on your game. But from what I notice, it's not a big performance hit so you can keep this one on too. The audio tab should be left on default unless you know what you're doing. And now we're going to configure your controls. This emulator has a automatic mapping function, but this one is a bit different than other emulators. With your controller plugged on, you're gonna click here on auto map and this window will show up. And then when you press okay, you have to press any button on your controller. And you only have five seconds or so in order to do that. So make sure you have your controller next to you. Go ahead and click OK, and then press any button on the controller. Now the inputs will appear here. You can change them individually if you wanna do that. Xbox controllers are supported by default, but I'm not sure about DualShock controllers. If it doesn't, then you're gonna have to make your DualShock controller to work as a Xbox controller. If you have a DualShock 4, there is a software called DS4 Windows that does that. And I've personally used it for many years, I would definitely recommend that. And there is also one for DualSense controllers as well, called DualSense X. You might be wondering how to interact with stuff on the bottom screen of the 3DS, and you do that with your mouse. It's already enabled by default and it works with no problems. Now with the settings completed, go ahead and click on OK. Double click on the game you want to play and you're good to go. The multiplayer is also working here like it was back in Citra and it works pretty much the same way. You can either browse a public game lobby or you can create your own room. It does not require a account, you just have to select the option and start playing. I have many videos like this on the channel, so if you like what you saw, don't forget to check out my other stuff, subscribe to the channel, and also leave a like on this video. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you soon.